Columbia presents Four Wind. Untitled, a new work written, directed, and produced by Norman Corwin for CBS, and starring the distinguished actor of stage, screen, and radio, Frederick Marx, in the principal role. The music is by Bernard Herman. Frederick Marx, in Norman Corwin's Untitled. With, uh... Reference to uh, Hank Peters, he is dead. That much is certain. The uh, fact of his death is common knowledge to himself and to the files of the War Department in Washington, D.C., and has been duly reported in his hometown newspaper and has been taken into consideration by his relatives and friends. Perhaps you knew Hank Peters. Perhaps if you didn't know him, you saw him somewhere and didn't know it was he. Quite possible. Because at one time or other, he rode on the coaches of the Santa Fe. A couple of the boys sorted out his belongings and put them in a canvas bag and sent them home. There wasn't much to send. Wristwatch. Check. Shaving kit. Check. Wallet. Check. Fourteen American dollars. Fourteen bucks. Sixty-two lira. What does family do with lira? Never mind. Put it down there. Portable radio. Check. Deck of cards. Check. Pack of letters. Check. Four snapshots. Let me see. Come on, come on. Marksman's medal. Right? That's all. Next. These things were sent home in a neat package. But... What could not be sent home were items unassorted and unrelated, which died within his head when he was hit. I'm a medical officer attached to the 6th Company, 22nd Regiment, 10th Division. In this coffin, we have reason to believe, is the body of Hank Peters, Private First Class. But you've left out the important thing. He died also of a broken Hebrew and multiple abrasions of the skin of a Chinese. And where in the report uh, have you mentioned what happened in a little Spanish town in 1938? I am the doctor who 26 years ago delivered Henry Charles Peters my file says, uh, primipera, normal labor of about six hours, no complications, anesthesia, ether, weight six pounds, four ounces. It was a simple birth. Ah, but it was not a simple birth. His mother's womb having inward connections with Scandinavia and the springs and winters of that region the seed of his father being out of the cross-fertilizations of restless migratory peoples and the silt and backwash of a thousand continental waters. I am his mother. His hair was light when he was born, but it turned dark later. He was a bottle baby after three weeks. Down the street a piece, there was fighting, Mother. And your boy got hit with a piece of metal. Who will come to the door and tell her why? It was a long street we started down, Mother. All the way on Maple and continuing on Piccadilly and the Nevsky Prospect. Winding down around the main drag of Canberra and connecting with footpaths and the Solomons. There are many mothers and many windows on that street, Mother, and many a turning 
and a sudden intersection. Where it leads to is, of course, the question of our time. I was his teacher. He was a fair student, nothing out of the ordinary. There is uh, more to the record. Sir, he went beyond you in geography, learning that an ocean is a strait, a continent an isthmus, learning that the sky is the limit of the letting of blood, and learning the lay of the darkest land. Sir, he has been graduated with honors, and he shall have a good mark in history forever. gave him music lessons. He started with a violin at the age of 12 and went as far as the third position. I'm sorry to say he wasn't a very good pupil. I understand his mother had a hard time making him practice. When he was about 15, he got a sudden passion to be a drummer, and so he gave up the violin. I advised against him doing it, but he was all caught up with traps and snares and paraphernalia, and I suppose he had to have his fling. There's no accounting for the taste of adolescence. Was it today, while Rome was burning the native huts of Abyssinia? A very respectable gentleman, indeed, including old King Carroll and his fiddlers three, Paganini Baldwin, Joachim Bloom, Sir Johnny One Note, and choirs of fiddlers, whole companies of fiddlers, nations of fiddlers, senatorial and parliamentarian, all of whom may now sound A's for a dead soldier and then go into a pavan. Call it none but the purple heart. Among the heavy drums, Hank sat and played the bazooka. Played the sweet bazooka. Played it sweet and low. He ducked his head from time to time as chords crashed all about him. And when the raid was over, he would rise and pick his pack up and go on against the kettle drums against the snares and booby traps and paraphernalias of the well-rigged enemy. And by such tactics, his and others of his band storming the Appian Hill up as far as the third position, the comfort of a box seat at the Met was being made secure. We'd been keeping company for three years before the war broke out, and I wanted to get married right after Pearl Harbor. But he enlisted immediately and said he'd rather wait until after the war because he didn't want me tied down to him in case he might get crippled or or blinded or something and be a burden to me. Bring his... While you were going to the movies once a week, the uh, Weimar Republic failed you. While you were fumbling on a sofa, a paper hanger, laid waste your plan. In your picture album, have you not left out the gallery of senators who voted down the League of Nations and a group shot of the Chinese of Mukden, dead since 1931? I got a letter from him once, practically telling me how to run my newspaper. killed him. It was early in the morning when we shared the road. I did not see him, of course, because I was miles away. I merely pulled the drawstring which fired the 88 millimeter shell. When the last bomb has crumped, and the tank is garage. 
And the cruiser wheels about and makes for port when the tape is scraped off the windows in London. I'm Charlie Farrader. Me and Hank were crawling up a slope on our bellies one morning. There was a stinking big red... to go. It's not easy to leave a woman crying at a train gate. It's not easy to leave a mother standing at a window or walk away and not look back. On that day, uh, will you please uh, let my mother know why it had to happen to her boy? musical score was composed and conducted by Bernard Herman. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.